right? So we got here this uh, Super Tomahawk chipper shredder. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It's only 50 bucks. I thought, wow, that's a pretty good deal. Um, so it doesn't run. Uh, it has 8 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine on it. So they're pretty, pretty durable. Uh, it doesn't actually look like it had too much use either. It's, it's in pretty good condition. So thought, oh, it doesn't look all beat up. So I figured we'll uh, give it a try. See if we can repair this. Uh, pretty sure it's just going to be a fuel delivery issue. Um, so first thing I did was I. Put a uh, spark plug checker bulb thing in there, and then uh, made sure that the switch is on. Give it a pull, and uh, the bulb's lighting up. So you get spark to it. Uh, feels like it's got compression. It's not. It's not really easy to pull. So I believe it's got compression. Uh, I think the guy t told me that it runs off starter fluid. So. If it'll start on starter fluid for a minute, then nine times out of ten, you just got a clogged up carburetor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the carburetor off and uh, clean it out. And I believe we'll have a running engine then. So this carburetor is a little bit different than others I've come across. The uh, it's got it's kind of got like a bowl on it, and then it's almost like a flow through one too. It's it's a little odd. I haven't, I haven't seen one of these before. Normally it'll have a bowl on there and then the, the air will pass through the top. I have one that comes through the bottom like that. A little bit different. So, shouldn't be that big of a deal though. What we'll do is we'll take our air filter off first. And then I think I got two Phillips screws here and there. Or I could take them off here. Uh, this muffler is kind of in the way. I'm going to try to leave it on and we'll see if I can get, because I can get the screwdriver through there. A little offset. So I'll take this screw out first and I'll try to get this one. I don't know if it'll make a difference because there's a there's a bolt at the bottom holding the uh, the bottom of this uh, intake here to the this bracket. So I might have to remove this carburetor anyway but uh not carburetor but this muffler get off first Loosen this bolt. Oh. Mosquitoes out here. There's that little screw. Looks like that's just the rod for the for the air filter. So there's that. So, there we 
go. That's pretty easy. So we'll just unhook this wire here. Not the wire, but the throttle linkage. And we'll pull the fuel line off. Hold that up so it don't leak. And I'll go put some bug spray on because I'm getting bitten. And uh, I'll take this carburetor apart. All right, so it's kind of an interesting carburetor. Um, inside here we got this tube that runs up. So here's a jet. And then it looks like there's another jet up top here. So we got one, two, and here's your, I think this is your, uh, your idle, idle set screw. So first thing I want to do is I want to find out where this is set right now. So I know where to set it later. Um, so I'm going to run them in and count how far in they go. So I know where they're set. So this uh, bottom one is half, one, one and a half. So we got one and three quarters. So I'll set that back where it was. So bottom jet's one and three quarters out. The top one is going to be, it's almost straight up and down. Top one is going to be half, one, one and, uh, one and an eighth. So top one was one and an eighth, and the bottom one was one and three quarters. And that's not where it's going to necessarily be when we're done, but it's a good starting point. So we'll take these three screws out. Hope we don't break our, our gasket for the bowl, because I don't have one. So obviously I want to try to get this gasket to all separate from one side and it's kind of doing half and half. So I'm going to get a razor and stick a razor in there to help separate it.
That tube looks like it's kind of a problem. I wonder if I just take this nut off. If it'll separate then. Oh, that's a whole jet. Hmm. All right, so <clears throat> I took a screwdriver and I took this jet out. So that's a long tube that was in there. So made it a little bit easier to disassemble. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull this out and see our float bowl is dry. So I think our float was stuck. Um, it's like an old copper or brass one, whatever that material is. But so the float was stuck closed. Either that or this is clogged. Um, because there was fuel on that line, but it wasn't going. wasn't going into the engine or into the carburetor. So. What I use is a piece of wire, so it's like, uh, you know, the stranded, stranded wire, and I just pull a strand off, and then I get one, one single strand off of that. Use like bicycle uh, brake cable or something like that. But this is what I'll use to clean the jets out because it's it's very very fine. And it uh, usually gets right in it. Works pretty good. Is that? I'll take the little piece of wire. I mean, I can see that hole is open, but so make sure you clear all your holes. And the little jet at the bottom here is usually what clogs up that tiny little little hole there, but. something in there so she had stuff coming out see all in there now you might not be able to see. The camera doesn't get very good close-ups. Use some carb choke cleaner. We'll clean it all off. Try not to get it all over my table. Clear now. Is that clean our jet tip off? A lot of crap on that.
and come out. If you got like compressed air, that'll that help too, because you can blow all the stuff off. Is that a little bit of material in here? Not material, but I like dust and stuff from the drag gas. <clears throat> try to kind of wipe it out. Easy to try to get it when it's dry, you know, kind of flake off, and then if you start spraying the gum out on there, it's gonna make like a mud, and then you gotta wipe it out. And, which I mean, I'll I'll use that too, but I'll try to get out what I can. This is actually pretty clean compared to like something with ethanol in it that that gets like kind of a like a slimy film on it and it eats up the carburetors and stuff so it's like it probably hasn't been used in a while that uh what we'll do is we'll take the the float off so we can clean out the hole where the needle valve is if i can get it up pat i might need a pair of pliers Two pliers, those pliers. Yep, that works. So careful when you take this off, because you don't want to lose the, the little float shut off. A little needle. See, that's what that's what actually, as this comes up, it, that that's what pushes on the bottom of the hole there where the fuel comes in <clears throat> to stop the fuel from coming in. So we got that off. We shall <clears throat> spray this clean. Probably Take this jet out. What is this? One and eighth. Take this jet out and we'll clean inside here. Which that looks clean. That looks clean anyway, but might as well spray it out while we're here. Yep. No problems there. Yeah, 
you have like a toothbrush or something, it'll probably help to clean like the flat surfaces and things in here. Just wanna make sure there ain't little pieces of uh, kind of corro corrosion and like dried up gas, cause it'll, um, it can get stuck in the jet. And then you basically have the same problem you have now when it doesn't run. Let's see, I don't wanna get this all over my table. So I'm gonna turn you. Into there. So I'm pretty much just spraying out all the little holes and stuff. Get all the gas and stuff out of there. So you get a bigger a bigger hole here as it goes in to there. So if you try to flush it this way in, it could clog up in this tiny little hole. So that's why I'm trying to back flush it out. Probably go back and forth with it and try to break it all free. So you probably take this out and it'd be a little easier to kind of clean in there. I think that's just about it with this, so we'll uh, put it back together. A little rubber tip on this, trying to make sure there ain't anything on this too. A little spray. I'll clean that off. So we got our float and our little needle valve back in. We will put our hinge pin back in there. There's that. Blow on it. I just want to make sure, kind of blow in there and, and make sure that it actually shuts off. It seems like it's kind of real low though. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. So there's that. The only thing that I forgot to do, which is put the gasket back on. So, I get to do it again. I should have just uh, made it sound like I was just showing you. Oh no! Now to show you that again, let me let me take that back off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little 
sleight of hand where you can't see I'm doing this. And then a uh, little time lapse thing. Not time lapse, but like a transition. Back into there and bam. Put a hinge pin pack in again. Now I hope you got that. There we go. So. Mm. Voila. So now I'll put this back on. Like so. This doesn't seem right. It seems like somebody pulled on it and Float doesn't open enough, but could be wrong. Yeah, see, it's not. Float's not even opening. So I'm glad I went and checked that. So. I have to do something. See, it like, so it's kind of cocked up a little bit. I think somebody probably pulled on it and bent that little pin down, a little hook down that holds the float. So when th when that bowl is on, it's actually being held closed. So I gotta do something to this. So what I'll have to do is, where that little hook is, I'd have, I'll have to squeeze that closed a little bit. So it, uh, so basically you want it to kind of be more level when it's off. So instead of, instead of that, see how it's tipped up? Probably be more down like, like this. So, I'm gonna, uh, Mess around with this a little bit, and then um, and then I'll come back when I finish putting it back together. All right, so I readjusted this so it's uh, basically level when it sits there, and uh, I pretty much I just kind of opened it way up, and I pried between here and there, and I just closed that little gap up a little bit. Um, but I think we're I think it's pretty good now when I. I put the bowl on, uh, I can blow through it, and then it kind of shuts off when it gets halfway. So, it should be alright. If not, I mean, I could take it back apart and redo it. Uh, but I think I'm alright. We'll go with that. So, let's put our screws back in. choke down here. So it's kind of an odd, odd carburetor, but yeah, if it works, it works. So let's uh, put our jet back in. So 
know if you can see where, it, where it's coming back up diagonally. Looks like I might have put a little, little bend in it. But hopefully it goes in right. Yeah, it's going in there. That's in. This goes in down here, which I really didn't have to reset it, so it might be alright just leaving it. We got this one. This was out one and an eighth of a turn. that so, so one eight sorry about there we're back together let's uh let's put it back in all right so we shall yeah slip this back up in there first I gotta put the Bottle wire on. back on the hose up on the back let's get that started down there So I'm going to drain this gas out and put some new gas in because I don't know how old that gas is. And uh, we'll try to uh, start it. Once I got to put the ho I got to put the fuel line back on, but I'm going to leave it off for now while I while I drain it.
leak here. I have to get a new gasket. out right here so I gotta do something about that uh, so I have to get another gasket in there and uh, it might even be warped I might have to like plane it down or something but you see it runs uh, put the filter on and we'll run a piece of wood through see how it works
Well, it doesn't work very good as a chipper, but as a shredder, it seems to work all right. As for little stuff, it's not too bad. I mean, it did make us have all right size pile. I mean, you saw what I put in there. And it kind of took it down a, pretty much not much. I guess it's probably faster than burning. But uh, I'm more of a whole tree chipper kind of guy. So I might be moving this one along. Anyway, hope that can help somebody.